No, no. Dr. Sternberg has asked me to do a preliminary investigation of Anarchy's murder. I would prefer to just get the Homicide Squad out here, but, her, but Sternberg is terrified that this murder will be the downfall of the entire Genesia Center. <laughs> so I've agreed to interview the subject for an hour before I call it in. Maybe I can have an answer to this thing and ease the way. I just hope it doesn't cost me my job. <laughs> Some interrogation room, huh? This is the Center's music library. Bet they never thought it would be used for something like this. But enough small talk. Time to get down to interviewing the first suspect. You. Totule! Oh yes, you are most definitely a suspect. Yeah. If it makes you feel better, I am too. There are only five of us left in the building when Anarchy was killed. Nobody has entered this building since I set the security system. It must be one of us. One of us must be the killer. I suspect that Anarchy had hidden in the building earlier before I locked the doors and engaged the security system. So, just five of us. As an investigator, I'm trained to analyze each suspect in many different ways. Each one of us at the precinct has their own favorite methods. Me? I analyze people based on my own experiential system. I try to figure out how each person approaches new situations, yeah, how they learn new things. That can give me an idea of how they might have gone about committing the murder. Everyone learns things through a cycle of four actions. People physically experience something, like you learning how to paint. We call that concrete experience. You understand? But that's not the only way to learn. You might reflect about how you painted before and learn from thinking about it. That's reflective observation. You might read about something or watch somebody else do it and come up with a way to do it yourself. That's abstract conceptualization. Of course, you could then actually try out some of these new ideas. That would be active experimentation. Now, we all do these things all of the time in a great big cycle. But we each prefer some of the ways over others. See, that's what I look for. Those preferences. That's what helps me figure suspects out. So, to analyze our little group, I would do something like this. Dr. Sternberg. He has what I would call an assimilating personality. He works with artists all the time, but he's more into information. He's into details and data. He likes abstract concepts. <laughs> Probably why he likes your art so much. He'd much rather reflect on things or learn by watching others than doing it himself. This is the kind of guy who goes to a boring lecture and actually enjoys it and learns from it. Rudolf Joplin. Oh, he's easy. Definitely a diverging personality. Most artists are. <laughs> they learn by experiencing things, like tons of piano practice. But they also spend a lot of time thinking about their experiences. Maybe that's why artists are so moody. Who knows, I'm not a psychiatrist. And then there's Dr. Leopold Zimmer. I have him pegged as being a converging learner. As a scientist, he's used to doing tons of research absorbing all of these abstract concepts, then looking for ways to actively experiment with them to learn more. More to <laughs> What about me? <laughs> Fair enough. I am a suspect too. I would analyze myself as an accommodating personality. I primarily learn from hands-on experience. I often make decisions on gut instinct. And I primarily get my information from other people like this little interview session we have going here. Molly uh, Sifo? Huh? <laughs> you? I'm not so sure about you yet. I suspect you're probably diverging, just like our piano playing friend out there. There's something about you, though, that makes me not so sure. Well, ordinarily I would take a long time interviewing each suspect. Not today. I'm relying on my gut instincts. I already know who the killer is. He's the person that had the most to lose if Anarchy had his way. In short, he's you. There's no place to go, Lana. All the exits are sealed. Fine. Have your little run. These will be waiting for you. Don't miss it. What's it? What's it? Good, good, good. 
Ah, 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 Lana thought about what I had told him about interviewing suspects. He decided that his only chance to keep from being arrested was to discover who had actually killed Anarchy. Here Lerner began the experiential cycle of learning. He had taken the abstract concept that I had given him and was now preparing to move to active experimentation, his own investigation. Lana found Zimmer examining the body in the modern gallery. He recalled that the scientist was a converging learner. He was probably looking for more data to fuel an active experiment of some sort. Mosetol! What? Oh, I'm sorry, you startled me. Uh, yes, I, I know I should not be examining the body, but what am I supposed to do? Just sit here doing nothing? Uh, besides, uh, we need information if we're going to solve this crime, huh? Uh, I found something interesting. There are deep bruises on the upper arm and shoulder. Uh, apparently whoever killed him held him with one hand and stabbed with the other. Uh, these bruises are very deep. It takes someone with abnormally strong hands to make these marks. I wonder how we can test to see how strong everybody's hands are, huh? Well, there's also the knife itself. It's quite unusual. Obviously a foreign manufacturer. This type of knife is quite illegal in this country. I wouldn't be surprised if it was purchased in Europe and smuggled here somehow. I probably shouldn't say this, but the evidence here makes me think that the killer may be Lieutenant Cobb. Lieutenant Cobb? Well, examine the data. As a police inspector, I imagine that the Lieutenant Kolb has very strong hands. And who would have better access to an unusual weapon? I imagine he is around exotic knives all the time. <sighs> I wonder where else that anarchy could have been in this building. Maybe that could lead us to some more information. Excuse me. Having actively experimented by starting his own investigation, Lana now had new concrete experience to reflect upon. His reflection led to another abstract concept. Where else could Anarchy have gone? Where might he find another clue? More active experimentation was needed, and the experiential learning cycle began again. <laughs>